There's nothing quite like curling up to watch an old favorite or something new on Netflix. I blame my family for this fact about me. During my childhood, we watched everything from obscure Disney movies to the old classics. The number of movie quotes that have found their way into the Eccles daily vernacular would suggest that we do nothing but watch movies. In preparation for this presentation, for example, I called upon the Eccles clan to list all of the movie quotes that are dear to our hearts and that we use on a regular basis. This is a fraction of the 160 quotes that we collected in four days. I like to think that these quotes serve as evidence for the influence that movies have had on me and my family. That is why it seemed obvious to me that I would join Senior Project and I would make a movie. Then it came time for my research paper. I found a mentor, himself a filmmaker and movie lover, Mr. Andy Sullivan, and he helped me decide on a topic. I chose to write about Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I analyzed the characters and talked about what made the movie a classic. I read the original screenplay and watched the movie several times. I really liked seeing the changes from what was written on the page to what we see in the final product. John Hughes, who wrote the screenplay and directed the film, made these changes for specific reasons, and I enjoyed guessing at these reasons and seeing how they influenced the final, pro final product. That's when I started to think about writing a screenplay and coming up with my own characters. I started to change the focus of my project to writing a movie rather than making one. Ferris Bueller's Day Off also gave me an idea for a service piece, to put on a movie night as a fundraiser at Empath. To connect the movie to my project, I gave a short presentation about my paper and findings and had a question and answer portion after the movie. I assembled a small panel of, that included Neil Genslinger, who writes reviews for TV, movies, and theater for the New York Times. He was kind enough to let me interview him for my paper, and with him and the rest of the panel, we had a conversation with the audience about Ferris Bueller and what makes a quality movie. Through donations and money from selling snacks, I was able to raise over $120 for Mighty Writers, which is a nonprofit organization in Philadelphia that supports and educates young writers to hone their skills. It was a fun event and quite a success. After writing my paper, I decided on my project to write a full length screenplay. This meant at writing at least 80 pages of an original story with characters in the correct screenplay format. Easy. Turns out original ideas don't just appear, and I didn't exactly make it easy for myself. I decided upon a pretty complicated premise. This is basically it. It takes place in the near future, where the entertainment industry is out of original ideas. Hollywood isn't releasing any new movies until a young and ambitious producer creates The Movie Machine, a large studio where actors are thrown into settings and genres and must play out the plot guided by employees of the movie machine called plants. These plants guide the storyline and keep the movie entertaining. The machine was originally created to make movies feel more organic and original, but the downside of realism is life-threatening. Jack is a young woman who is an actor in the movie machine and my main character. She has to face the very real threats that come along with being in a spaghetti western where you could get shot with a real gun or dealing with complicated emotions in a romantic drama. Jack, along with most other actors, want out of the movie machine, but there is no way escaping, of escaping until she meets a plant named Bianca. Bianca offers Jack an opportunity to join a secret rebellion whose goal is to get out of the movie machine. Jack has to learn to bend the movie plot lines to her will and outrun the director and producer who are bent on stopping anyone from escaping. This is the basic description of the movie, and it doesn't even cover half of it. Andy Sullivan very kindly agreed to reprise his role as my mentor for the project portion of the year. When I pitched my idea to him, he said it was ambitious. I knew that this was not going to be an easy movie to write, but I was determined to do my best. To get my screenplay going, Mr. Sullivan and I talked about ideas for inspiration and structure to build off of. I immediately thought about using the hero's journey. This is a narrative device that shows up in countless stories. The pattern was first identified by Joseph Campbell, who mapped out the common path that these stories follow. Other scholars suggested similar models, and I chose to follow Joseph Volger's version, which has 12 plot points. Almost any story with heroic main character follows this model in different variations. Some examples of movies that follow this basic model are Star Wars, O Brother Where Art Thou, and Field of Dreams, and many, many more. I have always loved the idea 
that all these stories are connected by these themes and stages, and my project felt like the perfect opportunity to make my own variation on this ancient formula. I planned how my heroine, Jack, would follow these steps, which nicely laid out the basic plot and trajectory of the movie. The working title became The Movie Machine, and I began to find inspiration in many forms. My fellow senior project student, Ben Rogers Petro, chose his project of, compo of composing a soundtrack for my movie. His music was a great inspiration that was modeled directly off of my plot and characters. I loved hearing his ideas for different themes and genres, and he asked some good questions that worked out kinks in the plot. And of course, I drew inspiration from my favorite movies. I looked at ones that had similar themes and situations to mine, like Pleasantville, The Matrix, even Chicken Run, movies where people, or chickens, are stuck somewhere where they don't want to be. These movies helped me come up with scenes and ideas that could flesh out the plot and help make the movie longer and more entertaining. I also watched movies of various genres, because within the movie machine, we see Bianca and Jack play out movies of different, of different settings. I watched romances, dramas, comedies, sports movies, and adventure movies, all the while looking for tropes and cliches to show how the movie machine is really just recycling the same old stories. One of the biggest challenges for me about the movie machine premise was the world building. I had to spend a lot of time on the little technicalities of this fictional world that I was building. I had to figure out things like, how do they move from movie to movie? Where are the cameras? Can the actors see them? Some questions I could answer, some brought up problems and incongruities that I had to fix, and eventually I had to let go of many of them and hope that they would be answered as I started to write. So, starting to write became the next challenge. I discovered that it is true that there's nothing more scary than a blank page, and for a long time I felt like I couldn't write anything because I hadn't written anything yet. <laughs> I jotted a lot of notes, planned a plot, drew sketches to keep the images straight in my head, and I started and restarted so many times to get something like a beginning. But once I got into the swing of it, I was on a roll. Still, as much as I wrote, I had to go back and fix. There was a lot of write a bit, change it, change it again, write a little bit more, and repeat. Then came along the musical. Another passion of mine is theater, specifically musical theater. And this year, AMC was putting on the musical of Oliver. I tried out, knowing that it was going to be interesting, adding the play to the myriad of taxes on my time, but in the end, I think it helped. Being on the other side of the script, as an actor, reminded me what happens to a screenplay after it's written. In the hands of an actor, a character can completely change from what is written on the page. As an actor, I decided how to say this line or the meaning behind that phrase, and I found my own version of the old shrewish man that was my role, Mr. Fagan. This meant that as long as the story makes sense and I give the actors enough character to work off of, they are the ones that are going to bring them to life in the end. However, spending so much time on the stage rather than in front of my computer made it hard to find time to get the creative juices flowing and get anything written. I found my creative process takes a very long time and a lot of mental effort. When I hit a wall, I found it best to talk it out with someone, talking through characters and my plot with my mentor, my sister, brother, and Ben, got me excited about my, the story again. I found that I needed to talk it out a lot. Most of the time, I completely regretted my decision for my project. Part of me still wishes I had come up with three or four ideas, really thought them out, and picked the best one for the time I had to write it, instead of coming up with one premise and becoming completely attached to it. As it is, I'm not even, ha I'm not even halfway through my 80-page minimum. If you're inter interested in reading an excerpt, there are copies in the back, and the first nine pages are in my portfolio. I am glad that I got attached to the movie machine, despite how far I got, and I stuck with it. I may have bitten off more than I could chew, but at least I learned how much I should, chew I should bite off next time. And don't get me wrong, I have loved writing what I do have, and I'm going to keep writing it until it's done. Then maybe I'll put it away for a few years until I'm a famous movie producer, and then pull it out again as the next blockbuster idea, of course accompanied by Ben's masterful soundtrack. In conclusion, I would like to show how grateful I am to be given this opportunity to explore, explore a topic that I have loved for so long. Through my project, I learned about the complexity of storytelling and the technicalities of screenwriting. I learned how to organize a movie night and communicate with lots of different people. 
and I was able to explore my creative process and writing style, all while doing something that I really love. I was able to, I know that I will continue to use the lessons that I have learned doing this project. I will keep writing, keep creating, and keep watching movies. Thank you. Question time. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is only raise your hand, like only call me over if you'd like the mic. I don't need to trot over if you've got a loud enough voice, but I'd love to deliver it if you would like a microphone. Uh, she'll then repeat the question. It's also a skills building class, so uh, that's a best practice thing that we want to help students do. So, who's got the first question? Ratika. Yes. What do you plan on doing with your? screenplay after it's done with uh, the question was what should what I'm planning on doing with my screenplay when I'm done and yeah I think I want to I want to let it go for a little while let it settle and then maybe come back to it and, like rewrite it a couple of times <laughs> in the future but I definitely want to finish it first <laughs> yes what was the most challenging part about trying to use this the screenplay format the, the question was what was the most challenging part of using the screenplay format and it was, it was a challenge. I, I got a, it's called a Celtic, it's called Celtics. It's a website that put, automatically puts it into the format, which was very helpful. But I think it was figuring out what information should go where, like the character descriptions versus the setting description versus, you know, how an actor should say a line versus what they have. Like it, it's weird and there's subtleties to it that I still don't know. Yes? Did you have actors in mind when you were writing this? Like, did you ever like come up with a picture of who you wanted to play the role? Uh, the question was if I had actors in mind to play the different roles, and I didn't really. I it was sort of like when you read a book and you have your own idea of what the character looks like. It was kind of like that for me. But I did. I definitely thought about looking up uh, different actors for the different parts. But that wasn't really at all helpful. <laughs> yes.
he has to cross the threshold into the new world, which is kind of, it's kind of vague in Star Wars, but it's pretty much marked, I think, by uh, finding that he has nothing left on Tatooine when his family gets killed, and so he decides to go with Obi-Wan, and uh, that's sort of crossing the threshold into the world of the hero. Um, and then he, he faces tests, allies, and enemies, which come in the form of meeting Han and Chewbacca, running into Leia, and their, all their adventures, and then approaching into the innermost cave is the next step, which is really him joining the rebellion and, and you know, becoming a, becoming a pilot with them. And then the ordeal is obviously blowing up the Death Star, which is very triumphant. And then, of course, he gets a physical reward, a little thing of metal. Um, so, and then there are, there are three more steps in the vulgar model, uh, which is the road back, resurrection, and return of the elixir, which you don't really see in Star Wars, but you can see, you know, there's often the ordeal will lead to the hero's death, and then they have to come back to life. Um, that's another uh, often seen trope. Um, and then bringing the elixir is sort of like returning and, and using what the hero has learned and giving it to other people. So. I just said, in a typical screenplay, is it more the norm to have to have, have the word rejected a couple of times, come back, rewrite, 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 and then maybe we'll, we'll consider it? Oh, I'm sure. The question was uh, how many times should it's a screenplay often rejected and needs to be rewritten? And I mean, I don't have first-hand experience. I haven't tried to put my screenplay out to anyone. But yes, I am sure with with anything creative or like this, you need to you know propose your idea, and then I'm sure it will be get rejected a million times until you make it uh, Hollywood worthy. No, but I, I can see the Hollywood side, and I can see executives thinking, well, if we launch this particular production, well, our bottom line might be this. words, but that I'm not very good at it, and my vocabulary isn't big enough for it. Um, and really, in the, in the text of a screenplay, you don't necessarily want that. A screenplay isn't made to be read, even though it has to be read, so it should be entertaining, and shouldn't, you should treat it like something that will be written, but in the end, you want, you want the information on there, and you don't want it to be buried in a ton of fluff. So that was an interesting balance, finding a way to make the writing interesting and captivating, but still get the necessary information in there. But yeah, I mean, I haven't written anything this long. This is pretty much the longest writing project I've done. So that was, it was just cool to see how much, even though it's only 20 pages, it still, it feels substantial. And it's really good. Yes? I know that uh, screenplays have a very specific format that you have to follow. What was your process for learning about that, that format and, and replicating it? Uh, it, it was, the question was about learning about the screenplay format and how to replicate it. And I did read uh, Ferris Bueller's screenplay, which helped a lot, sort of seeing, for the scenes that were the same from the screenplay to the movie, seeing how it translated and seeing what needed to be included in the screenplay for it to translate. That was very helpful. I also read portions of other screenplays. I, re I read a portion of the Star Wars screenplay. Hope. And I also read part of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid because um, the movie starts in a Western setting, so I wanted to see what a Western script looked like. Um, so, yeah, I read a lot of screenplays. I did some research online, not a whole lot, to see what each, you know, the where the actor name goes, where the you know where the dialogue goes, and so I did some of that. But mostly, I'm just making it up, <laughs> winging it. <laughs> Yes. Um, what do you think are the differences between a screenplay and a play script? Uh, the question was what I think the differences are in screenplay and script. I I don't think that there are any technical differences as far.
far as I know, other than the fact that in play scripts there won't be cut to the next scene or, you know, zoom in on this person's <laughs> face, which there are in screenplays. But other than that, I think it's just, it's just, you know, how it manifests. Okay, Bonus? Can question. I ask a follow-up? Yeah. Okay, so in a screenplay, do you have to, like, describe for, like, the costume designer or whatever the set designer what you want it to look like? Uh, the question was how much description for costumes and setting there should be, and you do, um, and from the screenplays that I read, it can be pretty different from screenplay to screenplay, and I think it's really how picky the writer is and how vivid the image is in their mind. My image, my images were pretty vivid for the settings. I didn't have a whole lot of um, ideas for like costumes and things, or like even lighting, so I was pretty not very detailed on that aspect, but I did, I like describing the settings and things, so I think it's pretty different from game to game. Okay, she is not going anywhere, so we can continue to ask